lower shit. Yeah. Thanks for watching the Daily Drift. <sighs> so guys, welcome back. So today, it's another day, just like every other day that we do around here. And today, I'm gonna be rebuilding my carburetor. So I got this kit from Holly. And I know a lot of you guys probably don't even know what a carburetor is, or if you do, you probably don't have one because they're very outdated and very old. So I'm not gonna really go too in depth on this because it probably doesn't apply to many people. And most of the people that do run them already kinda know how, but if you have questions, just put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. But all I'm doing today is very simple, and I'm trying to fix a leak that I have with the RX-7 because, well, as you know, it's got a fuel leak and I tried fixing it before, but I didn't have the right seal. Uh, it's the seal that goes to the base plate on the actual carburetor. So I think that's the culprit, but we're gonna tear it apart and see what's inside. See what's leaking, see what's not, and kinda just go from there. But the whole goal is that we're gonna get it running today. So if we can get it running, then we're doing pretty good. In the long run, the goal is we wanna make this thing street legal. Oh, don't love these jets. Let's see if I can see one. That, can you see it? Anyway, I don't know if you guys can see that jet, but we have jets that fly around here all the time. So it's kind of, I don't know, sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's not. It just depends. So the big thing is we want to get the RX-7 to where I can drive it on the street because I want to drive that thing. Like, we don't go to enough drift events. I have way too much money into that car and I never get to drive it and it's driving me nuts. So that's kind of like two puns in one, but you know what I'm saying. So we'll have to look at that eventually. And don't worry, the Miata, we're still working on it. The video that we did got screwed up because of the microphone. Yeah, it like I'm telling you guys, I had like four days worth of good footage that was just total trash. And I just didn't want to put it out there with, I mean, I'm talking like half the audio was just completely cut out. We are getting this going. Like what we most recently did, we ended up putting a intake air temperature sensor and a map sensor installed that. I'll be able to show you guys what we did there in another video coming up. We'll make sure to update you guys with this, but we're still working on it. We're f trying to figure out how to use the computer, but we don't want to bore you guys with us just literally typing around and not knowing what the hell we're doing. So bear with us on that one, guys. So without further ado, let's go get started on the RX-7 and get this carburetor working. So I'm gonna work on pulling this thing off so we can go start rebuilding it. All right, so here's the deal. What we're doing now is I'm basically just gonna take this apart. I've already rebuilt this section of the uh, carburetor, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it, just like this, probably leak fuel everywhere, and we're gonna remove these screws so we can take this plate off. So let's take a look at those screws, and then what we'll do is we'll pop all these suckers out. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now we're out of the way. We just gotta remember the orientation when we go to put it back. And this, right here, is the gasket that I think was our problem. It looks to be all right. I mean, it's obviously very dirty under here, but like, I don't see any points where it was necessarily leaking. So that's kind of odd, but it's okay. We're gonna replace it anyway, because it's just one more seal we can eliminate. So I'm gonna go get the new one. So my gasket kit came with basically four different types of gaskets. They're very similar, but also very different. Like if I line this one up with my old gasket, you could see that it's not exactly the same. Like the holes aren't the same diameter. So we know it's not that one. We do this one, we could see that this one's actually a little smaller and it's not quite lining up right. So we're just gonna ignore that one. And then when I do this one, it's almost a perfect match. So this is actually the seal that we want because it lines up perfectly and the holes diameters are the same. So I'm gonna use this one to replace the old one. I need to clean all this first. So first things first, I'm gonna clean off this part of the carb. Just using some carb cleaner, just spraying around, make sure it's nice and clean. The last thing I want is a dirty surface here because this is where it's all gonna be mating to. And that's just about clean enough I could eat off of, but I wouldn't suggest it. And then I'm gonna clean the base plate off, and make sure it's nice and clean. All right, so guys, I wanna show you something kinda of cool. If you ever have a carburetor, this is something you wanna look at. These are my secondaries, and if you look here, there's this nice little slot, okay? So if you're looking, you can see, I'm gonna open these up so you can see it even better. So if you look in there, you can see where there is a, this slot, right? Okay, that is the transition slot. A lot of times that can affect your idle a lot. If that's left open, 
and there's too much of it showing, that's like a huge problem. So mine's adjusted to where the transition slot is basically slightly showing. So if I'm looking on this end, you can see that light underneath, right? There's the slot. There's just a slight bit of the transition slot showing through, but there's like very, very little light, almost none. Reason is I don't want it to run too rich at idle. So I've got a pretty decent idle set with it like that. So here we go, we'll pop this sucker on there. Basically all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure that there's nothing blocking any of these holes and that everything's nice and tight. Uh, so now we'll just put this back on here very carefully. Basically the only thing I gotta remember is that this is the choke side so I know that my throttle linkage needs to be on the opposite side so it's easier that way I can keep track of what's what. And I just need to make sure I get these arms in the right position so I'm not messing anything up and that my gasket doesn't slip out because there's a good shot at it, it might. I forget, again, most people don't run carburetors because they're not from 1960 anymore. Let's see, okay, so there we go. So that, that seal is good to go. Uh, everything's on there pretty tight. So now I'm just gonna put the six screws back in the holes um, and then we'll go from there. Dang, look, I just replaced this thing and it's already cracked. That's crazy. Look at this, this is ridiculous. I just replaced this thing and it's already cracked. You can see right there. What in tarnation? I don't think I have another one of these I can use. I'm just gonna have to plug it and run it for now. I'm gonna tighten all these down. I like doing a star pattern from the middle out. I mean, you do it on your tires. Why wouldn't you do it on your carburetor, eh? Being careful because this is aluminum and it's real easy to strip. All right, so that should be good. Since we already replaced these seals, we replaced the inner seals, power valve, we changed out some jets, like, uh, most of the seals are good. There are some seals up here that we could mess with, but honestly, those we weren't leaking from up there. We weren't leaking from up there. So I think this may have solved our problem. So let's go put it back on the car and see if we can start it. So another nice thing about this kit is it comes with a new one of these for the base plate on the intake, since the one we were using on there wasn't very good, so this is brand new. This should also help. But uh, let's go see if we fixed our fuel leak. So we'll pop this little nasty, messed up old, beat up, gasket that's obviously seen better days. We'll pop our brand new one on there. Boom. I think I can get this done in a snap. Let's see if we can get this thing started. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get the fuel pump going so that way I can at least see if we're getting enough fuel. So we're gonna run our fuel pump and go check and see if we have leaks. This is gonna be the best indicator of whether or not this is actually gonna work. So we got fuel, we can see there we got fuel. We definitely have fuel pressure. Let's check it out right at six, right where we should be. See, you can see down here, this bowl is definitely where it should be. Oh, I feel a leak. So you could probably see uh, over here where the fuel leak is. It was coming out of this hose because, well, I'm a dumbass and forgot to tighten it all the way. So I got to fix that. All right, I tightened it back up. I'm going to go see if it's leaking again. See, I don't feel anything anymore. No fluid. I hear something though. You hear that? I can hear it leaking. Look at that, it's right there. Look, it's pouring out of the freaking. you can see it, look. It's pouring out of the Venturi. Or the whatever the fuck that thing's called. So I think the problem we're running into is I think my float level is too high and it's causing this thing to just spew fuel out. Cause if you look, so if you look right there, you can see that the fuel level is high. And the only reason it was leaking out of here and through these little venturis is because the fuel level was just way too high. So I think that this, this might be the problem. So we need to adjust it and lower it. We'll see if that fixes it. Okay guys, so here's the game plan I came up with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna revert these fuel bowls back to the factory, which is basically, so it should go just about to here, like the very bottom of the sight hole. Now I have mine overfilled specifically for drifting, just because it helps when you're going transitioning and stuff, but just to get this thing running, let's lower the fuel bowls back to the stock setting and see if it makes a difference. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's really quite simple. All that we do is we adjust these screws here by loosening the top one and then we adjust this bottom nut to adjust the size. Luckily, I have a electronic fuel pressure 
uh, sender blah 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 fuel pump so we can test this real easy so I'm gonna get to doing this and then hopefully we can get this thing started all right so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this up by loosening the lock nut first up top Let's loosen that up a little bit then we'll pop this sucker a little bit once I get it loose so I don't ruin the gasket okay so see how I lifted that up a little bit and now we can adjust this to lower the float bowl. I'm gonna adjust this, you can see it go down, and then you can see it go up, right? So that's all the way full. I'm gonna lower this. That's as far down as it'll go, right? Which is still kinda high, but we could play with this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn the fuel pump on and see if that flushes this out, and then we can see what it does once it gets level. So let's see what happens. Now obviously that's going to leak a bit, eh? Look at that. That's just pouring fuel. Still trickling. Ah. Well, that's not good. So guys, I basically pulled the air bleed out for this, or the whatever the fuck this thing's called. But basically it's got this little needle valve, right? And it goes like that. But if you look, that O-ring looks like it's seen better days. So maybe the fuel is leaking past there and causing it to get flooded. So I'm gonna change this out with a new one and we'll put it in. So here's my old one. You can see that O-ring seen better days. This thing's still functioning and inside the actual port looks clean, like it's not dirty. But these are the brand new ones. And these brand new ones, you can see like that O-ring is in way better shape. Um, but to find out what number it is, it's listed right up here. So you can see right there, it's listed. It's the 110, which is exactly what mine is. So that's how we know that this is the right one. So we're gonna go replace this from our old one and see if that fixes it. So these are very easy. All it is is this nut is used. You can see it's notched and this nut has a notch in it. So it's got two little gaskets, but you use this to basically spin it on. So we just pop it in there and use that nut to tighten it down, right? That's the adjustment nut. And then we just use this to lock it in place. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it went right down. Watch what's happening with the fuel, okay? So look at this. So what this is doing is I'm lowering it and then I'm raising the float. You can see the float moving in there. So now it's working like it should. So what I can do is now I'll raise it just a little bit above and we're gonna lock that down. And then we're gonna go see what happens when I turn the fuel pump on and see if it makes a difference. Fuel level immediately went up, but we are not puking fuel out the top. So that's an improvement. So that may have actually been part of the problem. So now we just need to get this set properly. That's a win in my book. At least now it's not pouring fuel into the engine. So now I just need to adjust the level even more. So guys, I'm basically an idiot, which you guys already knew that, but anyway. So I tried starting the car because I was like, oh, you know, why not? Let's just see, since it's no longer leaking into the fuel bowls, we should be okay. Not thinking, not thinking, that uh, it had just dumped a shitload of fuel into the cylinders. And so I tried cranking, and it goes, and I'm like, oh no, because I popped my 100 amp breaker, because it's literally, like, it's pretty much hydrolocked. So, now I get the joy of going and pulling all my spark plugs to see if I can drain the fuel. Hopefully and hopefully nothing's too fucked up. Hopefully I didn't fuck up a ring or something. <sighs> Wish me luck. Here's the other thing is I'm missing my special tool to get these things out, so that's not cool. But, okay, here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that bitch is soaked. It's got fuel all up on it. Well, I gotta pull all these, so I'll be right back. So I just pulled the spark plug out of the back one. You can see kind of how wet everything is down there. Like, holy shit, there was a whole bunch of fuel that just came dripping out. Like, that whole area is soaked. I pulled the plug and it was just like puking fuel. So, I only got one left and then we'll try to get all the rest of it out. So guys, I just spent like the last two hours trying to find this particular socket because it's the only thing I can use to get some of these spark plugs off because the headers are just so tight. So, I don't know if any of you guys are running small blocks, but these tools here make life so much easier. So if you look down there, you can see where that spark plug is. Good luck trying to get a wrench on that. It doesn't fit all the way to the back. Spark plug socket, uh, not gonna happen. But this thing makes life 100% easier. It slides on and then gives you plenty of access. So you can then get your tool 
on the spark plug, and bam. That just, I just took an hour trying to do that without the tool. And now I just did it in like five seconds. And boom, oh, that looks terrible. Oh, that's not good. Oh my goodness. It's okay guys, it was just anti-seize that I accidentally got on the tip. Okay, I'm gonna go try to crank it with none of the spark plugs in. Let's see just how much fuel comes pouring out. I can smell the fuel. Looks like most of it was isolated on this side. So this is kind of cool. You can see where it shot fuel straight out through and you can see like this is dry and that's soaked in fuel. Like you can see where it's all nice and wet from that cylinder where it shot out when we did that. That's crazy. Like you can see down there just all the fuel came coming out. It's soaked right in between that joint there. Crazy. So that's interesting. So I'm going to go and put all these spark plugs back in and see if we can get it started. Well, there must be a big storm coming because look at all these butterflies. They are flying like everywhere you could probably see. Look at them, they're all in front of the BMW. So anyway, there must be a big storm coming. I just finished putting all the spark plugs back in. So we got those in, we got the wires hooked up. Let's go see if we can actually start it without flooding the engine. Problem is now that the, the cylinder walls have all basically been fuel washed, which is very dangerous, and it's not good for your engine. So luckily we have an AccuSump. So I'm gonna go prime it, get it started, and see if it'll actually crank. Time for the moment of truth. That should release some oil. Oh, please let this work. Okay, here we go, guys. First try. See what happens. It's cranking. Oh, wait. It's fucking pouring fuel. This is bad. Holy crap, you can smell it. But look, it's just fuel everywhere. Look, it's all... This was just squirting fuel, just straight out. So we may have just reflooded the engine. So that's just outstanding. Watch this, you'll see what I mean. We weren't leaking from up there. So yeah, something seriously messed up with this thing. I don't know what else to do at this point. There's probably a lot more that I need to do. I probably need to take it back out, tear it back down, but I'm running out of time. It's a giant ass storm that's coming this way. And I, I just, I don't have time to fix it. And I gotta, I gotta seal it up so I don't get water in the engine, but damn it. I think I fixed it, guys. Look at that fuel level. It went down. It's obviously idling really shitty, but it's running. I'm sorry I didn't get it. Well, I certainly hope I fixed it. I don't know. Right now it's idling. We'll see if it warms up. The AFRs are all over the place. I'm assuming that they're dead wrong because they're just bouncing. It's saying that it's running really lean, which is weird. Oh no, it's wonderful though. Like, check that. It's like bouncing all over the place. If I give it gas, it's like, see, it's not very accurate. I don't know. We'll have to be careful. Looks like we got a coolant leak now. Outstanding. Well, I tell you, it's not one thing, it's another. Do you believe I was about to give up on this thing? I finally got it. After all that work, I can't tell you how excited I am to have this thing done, so I'm gonna go take it for a quick spin around the block before it starts storming, just because I just want to drive this fish. So let's do it. Alright guys, let's go take this thing for a quick spin. It just started raining, so I can't go very far, but I, I gotta drive it, so let's do it. Oh my 
this. We got this done just in time. Like, look at this. Literally got this done just in time. If we would have waited any longer, we would have not been able to get this done. I mean, I know I only took that, like, that was like a really quick run, but like, dude, we got to drive the car, we did it. Like, holy crap, it feels so good to actually get something done like this and actually have, like, accomplish what I wanted to. Because I really thought that I was gonna have to stop and have this be a failure, but I didn't. I passed it, I did it. I, I, wow, like, I can't tell you how much this car means to me and, like, the fact that, the fact that it's actually running again. means a lot to me like this this car has been so much more to me than what a lot of people would ever realize but like this car has always been consistent it's been consistently bad but it's been consistent like just everything that we put into this car has just made it what it is all the experiences we've had in this car first time drifting first time First time building a, a V8 swap car. First time, like, there's a whole lot of firsts that happen in this car. First time going tandem in this car. First time competing in this car. Like, man, we've been through a lot in this car. And I can't wait to do a lot more. Hopefully this coming up Lone Star season will be our season. Because I really, really, really want to compete. And I'm really, 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 really hoping that we can do it, that we can afford to do it all year. And that's the goal, really, that if we can make it to each round of the Lone Star next year, we'll be set. And now I think this car, like, yes, I still need to dial in the brakes and I need to dial in some other things, but like, we're gonna get this thing street legal and I'm gonna start driving it more and we're gonna eliminate every little problem we can because I need this car to be reliable. And I'm just so ecstatic right now that that worked. I'm so ecstatic. Well, I'm gonna go try to brave this storm real quick. It looks like it's gonna die down a little bit and get headed out of here because I have a bunch of homework and other shit that I gotta get done. So I'm gonna go do that. I hope that y'all are having a great day, night, afternoon, whatever. I hope it's going well for you. And if it's not, I hope I can bring a smile to your face. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Guys, check out what I just found inside my wheel hub. It's a freaking gecko. He was living inside my wheel hub, like what? So if you guys could, just hit this uh, little subscribe button right there, if you haven't already. And if you are subscribed, you know, this, this little video right down here, that's been selected just for you. I'm pretty sure you'll like it, so check it out.